Hello, and welcome back to another episode of First Impression Friday. Without the release of a Big Four Spring pattern this week, we are going back to Indie Patterns, where we are going to be taking a look at Atelier Scummit, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I did go to the About section and looked how to phonetically say it, and I hope I'm doing it right. Um, but they are uh, based in France. And the designer, Joanna, has a ton of experience working in luxury band, br look, I'm sorry, working with luxury brands, but also going to school and, uh, you know, getting degrees in all the things that you would need to make a beautiful indie pattern company outside of just pattern designs. Also, um, like, uh, graphic design and all of those things that are going to make the pattern instructions really, really awesome. Um, in the quality chart, she talks about, um, the fact that her patterns are graded professionally. So designing patterns and grading patterns are two different things. And she recognizes that, um, they're also tested on multiple sizes, seam allowances included. There's a lot of really great information in here, but in the sew better category, it mostly talks about this well-cut models in current styles with refined details, complete step-by-step -step videos for every single pattern, professional finishing without a serger. So she'll talk you through you know, like ready to wear finishing details. Um, the pieces fit together perfectly, which I thought this was interesting. I don't know if it means just that she makes sure that all of her seams are trued or if, I don't know, I wasn't quite, don't all of them fit together perfectly? Maybe not, but I don't know. Um, and then also uh, she claims that her patterns are more affordable because you can make multiple versions with a single pattern. All right, but she's also got a ton of patterns, including home decor, kids, and accessories, which you can take a look at by yourself. Today, we are going to look at all of her women's patterns, and she has a bunch of them. So we are going to try and get through them um, quickly, but also thoroughly. <laughs> all right, and I'm also, I know because this is a French pattern company, I am going to butch every single one of the pattern names, and I am sorry to all my French viewers. Uh, I'll do the best I can. <laughs> I think this is pronounced a nay, but it might not be. And it's going to be fine, right? <laughs> Try not to overthink the pronunciation too much. All right. Blouse or dress with a V neckline finished with concealed binding and extended with a button placket, seven eighth inch, seven eighth length sleeve finished with shaped cuff. Fairly straight blouse with or without sleeves that can be made into a dress with elastic waist. She has a level of intermediate pattern sizes, 4 to 22 in the U.S. And we will look at um, what exactly that means in terms of finished garment measurements, hopefully, um, here in a second. But here's where the seam allowances are included and she links to her quality chart. Full access or free access to step-step -step videos, bilingual English and French patterns. Um, interchangeable sleeves with all the patterns wearing a first name. Does that mean this being a first name means the sleeves are all interchangeable? That's really interesting. That means that if you get this pattern and another pattern that has a first name in it, you can swap out this sleeve for the other sleeve, which you normally cannot do because arm size are different. But if all of her arm size are the same, very intriguing. And then you can find more pictures at the hashtag an A pattern. Okay, paper pattern. Um, and then your PDF pattern comes with instruction, full size pattern to print and assemble one layer per size. So you can isolate layers and two printing formats, AO, and then also your A4 and US letter. Um, Okay, so lots of information there that I think applies to multiple patterns. So that's cool. And then we've got the paper pattern, if you want it to be shipped to you. And then the PDF pattern is actually $8.50. Nobody's posted a review yet. Um, all right, we'll look at all this stuff. So this is what you will learn. Main techniques video you can find here. Um... Secure sewing lines before assembly, assembling a sleeve, making French seams, 
making a simplified button placket, finishing a sleeve with a shaped cuff, finishing a neckline with concealed binding, making an open seam with folded overcast, assembling a gathered, like a baste. I think that's a basting stitch. So that's interesting that she calls out all the different lessons um, that you will learn from making this one pattern. Super cool. So you can tell you know, where you fall and which of these are going to be or how many of these are going to be really challenging for you. Okay, so we've got our size chart, finished garment, um, 34 to 52 is the, I guess, the European sizes. Yeah. And then in inches, because maybe this is the English version of the website, so everything's in inches. Um, the bust is 35 to 53, and the... She doesn't provide the hip finished because it's like a fuller skirt, I guess. But the body measurements for the hip are 34-ish to 52 and a half-ish. Um, so pretty decent uh, in terms of, um, the, you know, a variety of sizes. And then here's your fabric requirements. Um, very light to medium heavy. And she even gives the ounces and then the fabric type. So woven fabrics, batiste, crepe, double gauze, and light denim with zero to 10% stretch and no elastane. And then she tells what fabric she used, navy double gauze. And, oh, and links to it as well. So you can buy the exact fabric. And then in the instructions and the video, she used this fabric love that and then she even gives her measurements in centimeters because I guess she's the model and then click here to learn how to oh, wow okay so as you can see a ton of information before you ever even buy the pattern um, which I love I feel like we should be getting a lot more information about indie patterns before we buy them just to know, is this going to fit in my skill set? Is this going to fit me? Is, you know, like, am I going to be able to get the help that I need in order to execute making this pattern? So I love this so much. Um, I was hoping we could easily get through these, um, these photos, but you can't. And whenever you scroll over, it zooms in automatically. I sort of hate that when you do this. It's pretty. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Figured it out. Okay, good. All right. So we have four options here. We have a blouse and a dress, sleeve, sleeved or sleeveless. Um, the dresses have a gathered waist seam. The tops have no waist seam. And then the sleeves have this little banded hem here. Um, all of them are button front. All right. Still a little finicky to have to navigate through this. But, okay, here we go. So here is so cute the way it's styled with the stockings and the boots. Um, that's the dress version. Another photo of the dress version. Here's the navy one. A little bit dark in the photos, but you guys get the idea. It's a little bit of a basic design, I admit. You know, these are these kind of like button front v-neck dresses are a little bit of a dime a dozen. This gives a really good uh, picture of the sleeve where you can see there's a little notch there and I think also a pleat here I'm thinking that's intentional oh and then a really close up of the bodice so you can see you know that binding that finishes the front there's no doubt in my mind that when you make this yeah there is a really pretty pleat here I love that um, you will be executing finishing techniques that are unparalleled um, in in indie sewing, even in Big Four. Um, they Big Four, I think, does the worst job of showing you how to finish, you know, and do proper construction. They kind of are just like hem this and you know finish that, and they never really show you how. Um, but I think with her, based on what I've seen you know, never looking at, never having looked at any instructions, but based on what I've seen, um, you're going to get some really, really great tips on finishing that you can apply to any pattern. 
So that's why I think that her patterns, you know, she says in the on the homepage are good for beginners and advanced sewists alike because as a home sewist, you know, we don't learn all the techniques from every single pattern, you know. All right, tons of photos for every pattern, which is really nice. All right, back to the beginning. Okay, so now that we have a good idea of just like the, the quick and dirty of Atelier Scummit, gosh, I hope that's right, um, we'll be able to go through these a lot quicker. So that was an A, really cute dress. Why am I having a hard time navigating? All right, next up, we've got the Attitude. I know how to pronounce Attitude, thank goodness. So I'm assuming the Attitude is not a first name, so you can't swap out the sleeves on this one. I think that that's exactly what that means. But for example, all of this information is the exact same as the last pattern, except for the level and the pattern sizes. But all of this is the exact same. This is a 10 euro pattern. Um, this one has one fewer size, maybe, maybe more fewer. Um, finished waist and hip and in inches are here. So yeah, hip, well, it's a jacket. I'm not sure the hip matters too, well, maybe it does. Um, 35 and a half to, four, to 50, basically. Um, here are all the fabric she used. And then I wanted to see, yep, she has the weight of the fabrics again, suggested fabrics again, stretch again. I love that she includes, because, you know, even woven patterns, you can have a little bit of stretch in them. And sometimes it's nice to have that because it provides a lot of wearing ease. So I just love that she gives you that option. If you want to have a little bit of stretch in your denim, for example, um, one to two percent max elastane, spandex, whatever it is. Um, you know, it I don't know. I just feel like it helps people learn how to shop for fabrics for particular garments. Um, okay, what you will learn, assemble the trow. Oh, this is a pant pattern. I thought it was the jacket. This is a pant pattern, so the hip absolutely matters, and the waist. 27 and a half to 41 in the waist. Yeah, so I would, and I'm like a, I don't know, 14, 16 in the stores, sometimes 16, 18, and... I'm at the max here. So this isn't truly plus size because I'm not technically plus size and ready to wear. Um, so maybe we'll get some patterns that have a little bit more uh, inclusivity there. But we're looking at the trousers here. So I wish it would have said added to trousers, a nay dress and top. You know, that would be just a little bit because I guess I'm a skimmer because I could have read this and it would have said, Neatly cut, elegant, stylish, and comfortable slim trousers. A refined, couture-inspired trousers model with sleek finishes. However, with a stylish take on masculine wardrobe codes. I love the, like, French interpretation to English. So, assemble the fly, making Italian pockets with French seam finish. Making piped pockets with French seamed finish. <laughs> okay. Photos-wise... Here we go. So yeah, the elastane in these pants would actually be really helpful to have. Um, beautiful crotch curve, if I must say so myself. You guys know I'm a bit of a stickler for that. The front, the front she has her hands in her pockets, pants with your hands in the pockets. Why? Um, I think this is why. I mean, granted, her knee is up, but it's hard, hard, hard to get these kinds of pockets to lay flat. Um, this one looks okay, though. She is also leaning, so let's see. I'm so critical when it comes to these kinds of things. So, yeah, you can tell. These are just like your traditional, like, you know, business casual type of trouser that you would find at J. Crew, Banana Republic, you know, any of those kinds of places. They're saying she has this little thing at the end of every um, line drawing. Six variations are possible. I'm guessing three backs and two fronts and three times two is six. Isn't that how that works? Um, so they wouldn't necessarily look like incredibly different from one another, but I guess an option is an option, right? All right. 
obviously they look really good on her. She tends to, I, I think she has a little bit more of a straighter figure, certainly more straight than me. Um, gosh, the hands in the pocket. I get that you guys don't know what to do with your hands as you model, but I need to see how these pockets are working. Um, you know, I just need like a straight on photo. Cause even this one, like you can tell she's been like shifting back and forth and this is twisted and this is bunchy. So you do need a little bit of, you know, ease here so that you can bend your knee. So it's not like this is poorly fitting. Um, we are getting some bunching here, but again, hand in the pocket. Yeah, it does look a little uh, long here. Maybe the belt is pulling it down some or it doesn't fit in the waist right. Uh, these are all, all the things I'm calling out right now are so specific to her and her body. I, I don't want you guys to think that just because I'm calling out that the rise is long in that one photo that that means it's going to be too tall for you. Um, it, everyone needs to make certain adjustments, especially to pants. Um, just calling out what I'm seeing as she's wearing them. But some really, really good things that I'm seeing are this crotch curve is excellent. She does not have a mono butt or a wedgie. There's enough ease here for her to sit. Um, it looks to have, you know, even though it's a straight leg, I don't know much about her calf, <laughs> but um, it looks to have enough ease there. So all things to consider whenever you go to make any pants of your own. All right, so those are the attitude. All right, next up we have this solstice jacket. This straight jacket is slightly dropped shoulders, comes with three types of collars, dog ear, removable to be made of fake fur, or a flat ribbed collar, which I think is like a bomber jacket. High, high piped pockets, may be positioned vertically, low piped pockets may be positioned diagonally, buttoned or zip closured. I think she'll show two versions of that because she's really good at, you know, sewing up multiple versions. But this is high because it's high up on her waist. And I think that the lower ones will be at an angle and also sit closer to her high hip bones. So intermediate, 4 to 18, which is the same sizes as the pants we just looked at. And... 10 euros, all the things you'll learn in making this jacket, collar with a collar stand, making jetted pockets, which I think are in English is welt pockets, uh, removable collar, sewing and open end zipper. Oh, so there's a zipper and buttons. I love that. And then lining. So you're going to line the entire jacket as well. So wovens with or without elastane wool jacquard and then she used a wool cotton denim blend here's her fake fur and then brown wool fabric from her own stock all right let's look at the photos so yeah boxy situation here is the bomber style jacket i see so you either have buttons or a zip. But for those of you that watched whatever that video was where I was asking about button front bomber jackets, here's a good option, right? I got a lot of options from you guys on DMs. Thank you so much for that. Um, but here's another one. This one supposedly has 12 options. Here is that little dart again in the sleeve. I love that. I love that that's included because that gives you a little bit of room in the elbow, but it's not creating like this big wide sleeve, which I think is a problem in indie patterns, right? The sleeves always tend to be so big on the bottom. So these are the high vertical ones. Definitely a varsity vibe here. Here are our 12 options. Look at that. Okay, so obviously you have your three collars. You have high vertical pockets, low angled pockets. You have zippers and buttons. I'm having a hard time telling. Oh, collars. Did I say collars already? What's the difference between these four? Oh, besides the pockets. Like, what's the difference between this and this? The sleeve? 
straight sleeve versus like a blousier sleeve. Oh, this must be the ribbing. Well, obviously, I don't know. It's I can't possibly discern. <laughs> I'm not good at that game where you're like, what's what's the difference in these two pictures? Um, but there is that version. Super cute little jacket. I love it with the collar. High pockets. Let's, are there any pictures of the back? Yeah, the fit looks really good. You can see here how droopy or how dropped the shoulder is. A little twirl. All right, let me get to, oh, here's the back. Yeah, the back looks great. Sits kind of at her high hip. And then here's the brown version, which is more like a bomber. Cute. Cute little jacket. I'm a sucker for jackets, though. But I actually have a lot of jacketing fabric in my stash, so I really need to find some jackets and start making up that fabric. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there. All right, so now we've got Astri. And that is a first name. So you can swap out these short sleeves with the sleeves from the first dress. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Obviously, it entices you to buy more of her patterns. Um, and, you know, obviously the first dress, you could just like shorten the sleeve and then you have a short sleeve. Maybe we'll get to some other versions where it's not so basic of an alteration just to do it yourself. Um, but obviously if you have both of them and you don't want to go through the trouble, you wouldn't have to. All right. Blouse or dress with trapezium neckline, which I think is that like, you know, oh shoot. What is that shape called? Trapezoid? Oh yeah, obviously trapezoid, trapezium. On the front and a V on the back, finished with a pleated bias to prevent them from falling. The shoulders are delicately held in place by a tie. Across the back, I guess. Its airy style is conferred by the lovely ruffles. I love ruffles. I don't see ruffles on this one unless it's the bottom hem. That's what she's talking about. Um, to be declined with or without sleeves. I think we're getting some translation issues here, but we can make heads or tails of what she's trying to say. So you can sew it with or without your sleeves. Intermediate. We've got the extended size range on this one. It goes up to 22. Um, 850 pounds, I'm sorry, euros. Um, this is what you'll learn. Sleeve, French seam, cuffed short sleeve, finishing a neckline or an armhole with concealed binding, making an open seam with folded overcast, assembling a gathered basting stitch. And then here's your fabric requirements. And then the fabric she used. Okay, cute. All right. On for, on first peek here, it's really cute, right? The neckline is really, really nice, unique. We don't always see something like this. And then here's the back. Yes, where you have this deeper V and a little tie across the back. I think that on these, you can tie it once and then just slip it over your head. Because I don't know about you, but like maybe it's because I'm getting you know, a little bit older, maybe because I've been sitting around a lot because of COVID, but like, I'm not as flexible as I used to be and tying this is hard. Um, okay. So here are the ruffles that she mentioned. They are the tiers of the dress. So again, nothing revolutionary here in terms of design. Um, you do have these little bust starts, which we normally don't see on these kind of um, dresses and then you've got the tiers with the gathers so you can make this cute little tank top t-shirt um, and then two dress options and I'm assuming it's not lined so maybe there's a facing there there's your little cuff sleeve so cute and that's it actually not a lot of pictures on this one <clears throat> All right, what's next? We've got this cute little blouse, petite. Oh, petite. That says chooses in English, but I know that that can't be right. Chose, oh, what would it be in French? I'm so bad. Bohemian style blouse or dress designed by the talented Instagrammer Fanny. 
So this is Fanny's Instagram. So it was named after her. This versatile piece can be worn over 24 different styles from V-shaped or keyhole-shaped open neckline, pretty V-neck and back or full back, including short or slightly puffy long sleeves to short or maxi length dress and many more. Find and enjoy your own style. Smaller size range. Obviously, they've called out the bust measurement specifically here. Um, nine dollars not what is it, nine and a half euros is that how you say that um here are all of your options oh i actually love this little seam okay let's get into this this little seam here is so cute because you have all the benefits of getting like a ruffly thing here like a tear some shape some interest but it's not across your midsection it's not across like your belly it's on the you know slimmer sides of your body so I actually really like that you've got your different sleeve options um and then different lengths super cool you've got your keyhole v-neck and then your back options are this triangle back or full back So cute. Look at it here. Oh, I love this. It's such a subtle thing that you would not normally notice, which I think is like the beauty of it, right? Look how cool it is there. Let's get a view where we can see. You still can barely see it, but I love that that shaping is there. Oh man, this is really cute. I like this one a lot. Right? Such a fun detail. I even love the sleeve with the puff. Yeah, this is really cute. Here's the back with the full ruffle. Actually, it's not the full ruffle. Or maybe it is. We'll look at we'll look back at that line drawing here in a second. Oh wait. How about we do it right now? Yeah, it is fully across. Cute. Cute, cute. Um so Assembling a sleeve, French seams, clean finish for v-neck collar, keyhole, simplified bias tape. I don't know what that means, but that's intriguing because I want to simplify that process as much as I can. Um, supplies, which I don't know what all of that means. Width, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can read through all of that that you would need to make it light to medium or very, I'm sorry, very light to medium weight fabric. Crepe light denim, aka chambray, double gauze, and 10% max on your stretch. That one's cute, interesting. I cannot remember seeing anything like that, you know, in the recent history. All right, this is called Absolu Half Jacket, Half. Galay, I don't know what a galay is. This design will be the ideal mid-season friend. Combined with a chic fabric, it will dress up the most basic of outfits in no time. Unlined, this design incorporates a fully finished edge, I think with bias tape. Two length options are available, a large patch pocket, two necklines, and a part flat collar option. Composing a few pieces is quick and easy to sew. Smaller size range... 10 euros sewing a part flat collar which I think is a collar without a collar stand I think um, bias tape and assembling raglan sleeves and then here are your finished garment measurements 36 to 50 inches in the bust medium heavy to heavyweight fabrics including jacquard woolen fabric quilted cotton Etc. with a certain stiffness not too flowing, right? They don't want it to be too drapey. And then here are her fabrics. All right, let's take a look at the photos. Here's the line drawings. All right, so are these actual pockets? Because that's really cool. So you've got your raglan sleeve finished with bias tape. You've got little pockets. You know what this would be a perfect pattern for is a quilt coat. Here are other options this is the bias tape all around oh this is a flat collar so maybe more similar to like a bomber jacket would be 
And then this one has a more rounded neck. And then I don't, oh, then you can do pockets or no pockets. I don't see the, is this, I don't see the differences in the others. Okay. Oh, shoot. I meant to stay on the photos. Um, here we go. Cute. And she's absolutely right about it being a perfect transitional. Yeah, they are pockets. Super cute. Here's the flat collar again. I kind of really like that detail. Let's see more of that. Yeah, you can't really see the collar. Love the raglan though. It does have a some kind of seam up here on the sleeve or dart up there on the top of the shoulder, which is nice for shaping. Yeah, there's a good picture of the flat collar. And since she used a jacquard on this, the wrong side is also pretty, you know, because jacquard is like reversed. It's like the negative of each other. Um, so that's obviously a brilliant use of that fabric. Here's another one. Yeah, super cute. Here it is from the front. This is the different, this is the one without the collar, but the more rounded high neckline. Oh, I love this so much. It makes me want to go get another blanket from Goodwill. Another reversible fabric. So cool. And because all of these edges are sort of rounded, you know, the bias tape's not going to be that hard to install. Love. Super cute. Absolute. Okay, next. Wait, didn't we just do this? This is Eugene, which looks a lot like... Oh, wait, maybe she just... Oh, so this is the exact same as that other pattern. It just has a surplus bodice. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Sharing a name with a talented, renowned Instagrammer, Eugene is the eponymous designer of this pretty model with delicate details, fitted, I'm sorry, ruffled sleeves, wrap neckline, bust darts for a fitted bodice in contrast to the full skirt and easy to make as a blouse alone. All right, so here are your options. So pretty much, yeah, the exact same. It does have a little ruffle detail on the hem of the sleeve if you're into that. But other than that, it kind of looks the exact same as the dress from a couple versions ago, right? Uh, what one was I talking about? This one. It's a lot like this, just a different neckline. So don't need to spend a lot of time on that. This is Lisa Ron, Lisa Ron, like macaron. <laughs> sure with no bust dart and rather loose its boyish style is highly compensated by lovely feminine details flounces at the bottom of the wristbands and possibly on the collar smaller size chart yeah it's your standard button down with options for like little ruffles on the sleeve uh, hem can you see those little ruffles there here is that you can see them there does she have a picture of it completely untucked here's the back standard traditional button down what is this oh that's just it under a sweater okay not super helpful oh here's a close-up of the sleeve love doesn't that look like a well-finished sleeve with the um sleeve placket and everything I'm not seeing any photos of it completely untucked, which I would like to see so that I can see the front, how long it is, you know, all that stuff. This photo is of the construction of the inside. Look at that cute collar. Love. Yep, so none of them are completely untucked, so I don't know how long they are in the front, but based on the... Um, line drawings like a little bit shorter than they are in the back but you're going to be able to learn a lot of stuff french seams lining a yoke 
um, all-in-one facing method, AKA burrito, uh, assembling a collar with a collar stand, sleeve, button cuff with or without a flounce and making a cuff slit with placket. Like to medium weight fabrics. All right, so a good standard button down. If you don't have one in your stash, that one looks to be as good of one as good as one as as good of one as any. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so this is France Duval Stala Stala. It is the eponymous designer of this elegant half jacket, half coat number, shawl collar, kimono style armhole, classic back. Option to add a button as well as patch pocket or piped pockets. Okay, so this must come from another one of the um, Instagrammers, which I like that she's doing that. Assembling kimono sleeve in front, Assembled in back, making a shawl collar, lining a coat to give the garment a professional finish, making a patch pocket, making a piped pocket. Here are your finished, I'm sorry, your body measurements and then your fabrics, woolen, jacquard, denim, six to 10 ounces. So that's pretty hefty. So this is a, a coat, you know. But love the shawl collar. This is giving me like, remember whenever the grandpa cardigan was like a thing? Um, this is giving me that vibe, but in a coat, which I mean, it's got to be super simple to sew, right? Like there's not a lot to it. Oh, look at this the lines in the back. So pretty. So, so, so pretty. Yeah, pretty tailored. Um, not as oversized as I was imagining. Oh, this is it in like more of a traditional like blazer fabric. This is the piped pocket. So pretty. Um, or a double welt, right? And then here's the lining. That looks really good. Really well sewn on her part. Yeah. Slim through the front, it's got some volume. I'm sorry, slim through the back, some volume in the front. Here is the back sewn up, super pretty. Yeah, here's the wool one. It is a little bit wider in the shoulder. This is nice. This is nice, not too fussy, still really chic. Like I would buy this and probably reach for it all the time because it is so simple and clean lined. I mean, even the blazer version is really cool. Right? Like a lighter weight kind of version. I mean, I guess that could be some kind of wool, but I'm definitely getting like, it looks like a blazer. We're getting some fun photos now. And I mean, you've got to be able to sew that up pretty easily. If you've ever sewn a lining before, you know, you're halfway there. I love that. I do have a lot of those kinds of fabrics in my stash too, because I thought I was going to be making a lot of coats, but then, you know, it's never cold enough here, but this one could be perfect because it doesn't, you don't really get all super bundled up in it. You know what I mean? It's kind of meant to be open. Nine and a half euros for that one. Love it. Here is the Har Harmon Harmony? Harmony. Dress with pretty volumes and neatly defined waist, blousing or not. Back and front of the shoulders yoke are adorned with gathers. If she starts putting more gathers on more things, I'm going to be broke. You know, I cannot resist a gather. Um, while those on the skirt provide a feminine volume, the button front dress can be made with either 7 8 sleeves or short butterfly sleeves. Finished with French seams and taped seams, like bias tape. It can also be made as a blouse and a long dress. Okay. Nine and a half euros. Assembling a sleeve, French seams, sewing pockets on a skirt, securing sewing lines before assembly, which I think is stay stitching, maybe. Finishing a seam with bias binding. She's calling this advanced, but none of that really seems advanced to me. Here are our finished garment measurements. Very lightweight fabrics zero to 
you know, 8% stretch max. All right, let's take a look what we've got. Sweet, kind of hard to tell what's happening. I think it's got like a, yeah, a forward yoke with gathers. These are the butterfly sleeves. V-neck, button front, but it's a separate or are these all sewn together? They're all sewn together, so you've got an actual waistband. I have not seen a dress with an actual waistband like this in so long. Side seam pockets, gathers into a little sleeve cuff. Both the front and the back have gathers. And I'm pretty sure when she said ruffles, she meant gathers. Yes. So here are your 10 options. Different sleeves and different lengths, I think, are the options here. Here is the long dress version, sitting a little low on her. There she is in the top again. That looks to be sitting right, so I don't know. Maybe that other one was, let's see if we can get more photos. Look how pretty. This is a great photo. These are the kind of photos that really, really help us, right? Like, I get you want to be cute and twirly and all that, but give us like one or two, like really just simple, <laughs> simple photos so that we can see it. So that was the, oh, this is the longer one. Oh, I guess because it's like a little bit more blousey, so maybe it fell down. Because it does say bloused or not. So I think there might be a couple of options in terms of how long the bodice is. Okay, next is another little tiered top. This one's Amy. Simple blouse with a round neckline with plated bias. Short sleeve, slightly rounded and gathered above the sleeve bracelet, which might also mean hem. Yeah, slightly rounded through here, I think is what she means and then gathered right here above the like kind of cuff. Offers a version with a ruffle all with or without a sleeve. And again, ruffle means gather. Interchangeable sleeves. Oh, in patterns whose names end in EE. -E. So it's a little complicated to determine which sleeves can be interchanged, but I appreciate that she went to that length to make it possible at all. So here are our line drawings. It's pretty, you know, basic and straightforward here. Eight and a half euros for this, which, I mean, considering you can get like other things from her site for not that much more, I'm just kind of surprised. Is this woven? I think it is, which is nice. Um, French seams, yeah, so it's got to be woven. Finishing neckline with concealed binding. I mean, it is a very simple design. Again, though, I think you're going to really just have, it, it's going to look like the most bomb woven shirt you've ever made. <laughs> you know what I mean? The finishing details are going to be unparalleled. So something to be said for that, even though it is a little bit basic. Next, we have Zoe or Zoe. And again, it's the V-neck button front with a sleeve with a ruffle. And you can make it into a dress, a sleeveless top, or a, well, sleeve or sleeveless dress or top. Okay. We've got to start getting through these or else this is going to be like the longest video ever, which I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind, but. I gotta try and like meet in the middle a little bit. All right, here we go. Allure. Allure is, I think, a wide leg trouser. Impeccably fitting, mid-rise, straight legged trouser. Italian pockets give a sophisticated touch of elegance. Wow, front patch pockets create an undeniably hippie style. On the back, there's the option for patch pockets or not. The bottoms of the trouser are finished with a wide hem held in place by an invisible stitch or top stitch. Eight possibilities. I think that the little slant pocket is AKA Italian pockets. And then 
the back is with or without patch pockets. The front is with or without patch pockets. Thank you. Pants photo without hands in the pockets. Okay. So you can tell they are really close fitting through the hip through. Well, yeah, through the hip kind of even through the thigh and then they just go straight down from her low hip. Here is a beautiful view of like the side backish. Here is the back. If I could get a pant to fit my tush this good, I would quit sewing. No, just kidding. I would only make that pant for till the end of time. <laughs> Here they are in some kind of like velour or velvet corduroy or something with a little patch pocket, um, a little bit more casual. This fabric might have some stretch in it, which is why it looks to be a little bit um, looser fitting. There they are in the back. Oh, here's a little striped version. Yeah, so mid-rise isn't my favorite, but that's easy enough to alter. This one seems to have like a, you know, full-on um, fly zipper. Um, light to medium weight fabric, zero to 10% stretch, um, 1% max on your elastane. So simple, classic mid-rise straight leg trouser. Next we have Tempo. Tempo might be a shacket. Military military jacket with much style, designed with every detail taken care of. This model features a dog-eared collar to replace the classical collar stand, slightly dropped shoulders, fitted tailored sleeves, and different types of pockets, allowing multiple options. Well, let's see. So you've got a front yoke. Um, she's not showing the back here, so I'm assuming the back is just flat. Different um, pocket options. You've got your patch pocket. You've got your pleated pocket. No pocket. Pleated pockets here. No pockets here. Welt pockets here. <laughs> um, collars look to all be the same. You have this little, oh shoot, is it called an epaulette? Um, Yeah, definite shacket vibes, which is a combo shirt jacket. Cute, right? I love it with the little sleeve rolled up. Yeah, I'm getting, yeah, this whole beachy vibe on it for sure. Look how cool this pocket is. This is what I thought was the welt pocket, but it's not. This is definitely sewn from the button placket through to the side seam, right? Am I missing that? There's your collar. So it kind of like, instead of having a collar stand, it kind of just rolls over on itself. Much easier to sew than regular collars. Maybe not. This doesn't look like any of these options though, but it is cute. Buttons, buttons. Oh, here's the inside. Thanks for showing. Unlined. Here are some other fabrics. So yeah, more of like a twill type fabric here. Definitely leaning into the military. That one looks, you know, kind of professional looking. Does it come with a belt? Yeah, so no belts were illustrated here either, but you've got a little belt with belt carriers. <coughs> Cute. Um, wow, look at all this that you are gonna learn. So much stuff. Finished garment measurements are the same, I think. Not finished, body measurements are about the same as we've seen. Four to eight ounce fabric, poplin, denim, gabardine, or even like lightweight jacketing and stuff like that. And then she used a green cotton twill, cotton gabardine, and then denim. Love. 
you know, I think every designer kind of like, oh, look how cute this is, kind of like has their thing. Her thing might be jackets. Like I get that she also makes and sells dresses and that's nice and everything. The dresses designs seem to be a little bit kind of like, we've seen that before a little bit. Um, but those jackets, both of them are really stand out to me. This cute little skirt is as well. I'm obsessed with this. It's such a little thing. Like you could add that to really any pattern you've got, but like, I don't know, seeing it all done like this just <laughs> makes me so happy. Um, so this is called November straight skirt, fully lined, short and feminine. The cut for the back is adapted for the front to incorporate pockets. Okay, with the optional finish of a small flounce. So, our English ruffles are French flounces. French ruffles are our English gathers. Are we keeping up with the translations? This one has actually even a smaller size range, which is no good for my bum. Um, I'll check those here in a second. But, I think what she's saying about the back coming into the front pocket is that all of this is one piece. Yeah, like there's no side seam. Like this line here is not really a line. Like it wraps around, which I think is really cool. Show me the side. Oh, here's the back, which I think is important. Yeah, a little bit funky here. This happens when it's too long through the back here. Um... So that just needed to be like pinched out. <clears throat> oh, of course it's black and I can't really see. But yeah. Oh, wait, there is a side seam there. Well, heck, I don't know what she's trying to say with that then. Because even this looks like there's a zipper in the side. So that's not happening. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Cut for the back is adapted for the front to incorporate pockets. I don't know what that means. Um, sewing pockets on a skirt, lining a skirt without any visible seam, recommended fabrics. Oh, are we not going to get a size chart? Oh, we don't even get a size chart on this one. All right. Well, that's a no for me. <laughs> like there's no chance I'm going to buy that without seeing the size chart, especially seeing that it's one size smaller than all of the other patterns. Like, there's no way that's going to fit me. I was already at the high end. All right, this is Elise. Elise? Elise? <laughs> Chic tank top with scoop neckline. Bottom amply flared for a very fluid effect. Can be embellished with a flounce at neckline and or in back. Intermediate, which I don't know. Well, I don't know where she's getting these. I guess she's erring on the side of caution here. Um... Nine euros. It is a really cute, simple again, but you know, you start adding ruffles to things and I just can't help myself. Yeah. So I like the trapeze, you know, the kind of a line design of it. Obviously you can extend that and make it into a dress. And then you've got the ruffled collar, the ruffled back yoke or simple and plain without any of that. So some things I'm noticing is that it does seem to be a little bit fitted through here and then this is where the A-line begins, kind of like maybe at her high bust. So that when you're looking at it from the side, it's all really tailored through from here up, right? Like it looks like it fits really well all through here and then at the bust is where you start to get all of your volume. The volume does seem to sit front to back rather than side to side, which is kind of weird when you're looking at it from the side, but when you look at it from the front, it looks very slimming. Or the back. Here's the back. So doesn't it look really slimming? Like, it doesn't look like it's as big as it really is. Here are some close-up shots of bias tape. Beautiful. Ruffle neckline. Gorge. Yeah, she's cute. Nine euros though. Why is some things that seem so simple nine euros and the more complicated things are like 10? Hmm. Um, 
here's all the things you learn. Here's your sizes, fabrics, Batiste, crepe, lightweight denim. I probably have a million and five fabrics in my stash that would work well for that. Just really cute. Really cute, really kind of sweet, but clean and simple. Oh, we've got a hoodie. This is called Icon. No. Icon. I. Oh, man. Econy? Econ? <laughs> I hope you guys aren't cringing too bad. Simple sweatshirt with cardigan or cardigan with smart detailing. Slightly curved raglan sleeves, which soften the shoulder. I'll show you what she means in a second. Ample hood with lovely interior touches. Sweatshirt option can be made with or without the hood and cardigan can be zipped or buttoned to be sewn either with an overlocker or a lock stick machine and a twin needle. This is our first <coughs> uh, knit pattern. Beginner. Um, okay. 10 euros. All right. And this is what she means. This seam here, see how it is curved? Like it's like a little baby arc. Instead of it being like, boop, straight like this, that provides... A really really flattering shoulder line rather it making your shoulders look wider or linebackery if like, you feel that way when you wear raglan try a curved one all right <laughs> for what it's worth that also looks really good on a man um to kind of softens their shoulders a little bit and makes them look I don't know it makes the line look less like big and bulky um, Dan has a sweater that he got from Banana Republic maybe and of course, I noticed the curve. He has no idea. He's just like, oh, wow, this looks really good. And I'm like, yeah, it's because of that curved raglan sleeve. And he just rolls his eyes. He's like, okay, whatever you say. Um, but it's true. And every time he wears it, I notice how nice his shoulders look. So um, anyway, so you have options for a hood. You can just do a banded collar or you can do your cardigan um, that has this sort of like flat collar. Um, buttons or zips, kangaroo pocket or without. And then you've even got this little itty bitty ruffle here if you want. So here's the back. That's a great little fabric. Oh, look at the hood. It has like a little center panel. Love that. Here it is from the side view. Really nice. No like bunching. It's all sitting really nicely on her. It's a sweatshirt, but I mean, it looks like a million bucks. And I think that's the whole point. <laughs> so give us some more views of the hood yes yeah so you can see here how you know how sometimes hoods only have that center seam first of all it's really difficult to sew secondly it creates like a mohawk effect not cute this is an adorable hood and it matches up with the raglan sleeve so it's just gonna create like just really beautiful lines here's another view of it right like it doesn't make her head look enormous <laughs> and all of this lines up. Maybe that's what she means about like seams matching up and stuff from the homepage. That's a really cute slimming sweatshirt. Let's see it in another version. So this is just your little sweatshirt sweater with the banded collar. Very basic, but really cute. Slouchy, cute. Here's the what she's calling the cardigan version, which is really just like a zip up version. You've got this adorable sleeve and the little cuff peeks out below. Like that's, that's not her shirt. That's the band of the jacket. So it's the same fabric in all three places. And then it's little, so cute. Um, oh, here we go. Cute, right? It looks like a shirt peeking out, but it's not a shirt. It's part of the jacket. Oh, here's another version. Oh, okay, I see, with the striped trim, which you can pretty much find readily available nowadays online. <coughs> I thank you for talking in your hair. I know that seems so silly, but it really does help me see um, what's going on here. So this is like another version of a button front bomber. This one just doesn't have the bottom hem. So it was like the universe heard me asking for that. In addition to all the wonderful DMs I got from you guys, there's some really great options here too. That's a really cute sweatshirt. 
really cute hoodie. Not too bulky, not too boxy. Um, really, really adorable. All right, now we've got Bohem, Bohem, La Bohem. I'm trying to think of the um, Rent, the song from Rent. <laughs> La Bohem, right? <laughs> um, an elegant, simple blouse, box pleat in the back, and flounce at neckline and cuffs. Longer in back than front. This is a beginner. I'm really not understanding the, the levels. Um, 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 nine euros. French seams, assembling a sleeve, finishing a cuff with a ruffle, finishing a neckline with a flounce. Okay. And then no size chart on this one. So, all right, here it is from the side. Not really all that helpful. Here's the line drawing. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it is pretty straightforward. You've got your, I think these are called, are they still French darts when they... When it comes in from the arm side, what's that called? I know these ones are called French darts. What's this one called? And then look how pretty this is. It's a, like a really deep pleat that opens up to allow room in the waist and hip. And then you've got your forward shoulder again, and then this little collar, this ruffle detail, I guess is a better way to say it. So your options are... Yeah, just whether or not where you place the ruffle and if you place the ruffle anywhere. Yeah, it's not laying super flat through here, which means it's a little bit long for this piece, but maybe it got stretched out. The I, Ideally, this would all lay completely flat against the body. <clears throat> here is another version. That one's laying a little bit better. In this gauzy fabric. Oh, here it is untucked. I love to see it untucked because you just never know. And this one has this cute little shaped hemline. I might have missed that. Beautiful sleeve. You can tell it kind of curves with her elbow. So nice. And then again, that, that dart that's in the back here, creating a beautiful tailored like shoulder line. And then it all kind of extends out from here. So pretty. Right? Love that. And then we've got, oh, oh, go back, go back. We've got a plaid version. Yeah, that collar looks really good. And then she added it, um, the little ruffle to the sleeve here too. Kind of long in the shoulder a little bit. But wide, blousey, adorable. Adorable. Okay. Next we have, all right, next up, oh, we're getting into some skirts. Oh my God, look at that. Okay, okay, focus, focus. <laughs> I'm like, squirrel, jumpsuit, ruffles. <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, so this one is called Ar Ar oh, Arpege <laughs> Midi Long or Short Skirt with haute couture details, buttoned closure in back, button loop fastening, long tie belt or fitted buttoned waistband. It features low profile side pockets sitting forward of the, sleam, of the seam. These give a laid back flare to this chic model. Okay. Um, here is the line drawing. Oh. Are they like slit pockets? 12 possibilities. Oh my word, look at this. <clears throat> wow, okay, yeah, obviously different lengths. Um, and I am really not understanding how those pockets are sewn. That's kind of interesting. And then I know that there are options with this waistband, either a fitted one or this one. Is this, it does, It's not a wrap. Um, it just has this really long tie attached, which I guess makes it a little bit adjustable. And then center back zippers maybe. Here is this version, that's the fitted one. That's really pretty. I do not understand how these pockets are sewn. I've never seen anything like that. Here's another one. How do they do that? And then I think this is the, this whole thing here is the hem. I love a deep hem. And then you can see the back here. Gosh, that fits her really well. 
in the back, especially. Here's a back view, right? Sitting right nicely up against the lower part of her back, which is kind of really hard to fit. This is blowing my mind. I just don't even understand. I guess it's kind of like a welt, but not, <laughs> you know? Here's the Thai version. Now, is she going to show us? Nope. I was hoping we would get to see the Thai version untied just to sort of understand the difference. But this one has all these buttons, which is kind of Victorian, kind of wedding-y, kind of a lot of trouble to get in and out of. Um, but I guess the Thai one, there's no elastic. So, or is there elastic? No, no elastic. So I guess if you made the version with the tie, you could put elastic in the waistband and then make it kind of like adjustable. That could be nice. Those pockets, though, are just the most intriguing thing. I would buy this just to learn about those. Um, and then there's your fabric options. I mean, simple, but not. And I don't know. I'm really getting into skirts. I don't know what's happening. I'm just, I'm, I'm really digging a skirt. Oh, here we go. Now we have an elastic waist skirt. So this is bonjour. I know how to say that. <laughs> this skirt is fully made with French seams for a clean finished look. It's elastic waist offers maximum comfort while being extremely easy to make. No gathers are required except from the elastic to avoid a puffy effect. Duh. That's so brilliant. The very comfortable pockets directly sewn in the side seams to provide a beautiful relaxed look to this very girly skirt. I love the hemline on it, but it is just an elastic waist skirt and it's nine and a half euros. Like, I don't get that. Oops, let me maximize. Yeah, it's an elastic waist. I think this is like a circle skirt sewn into an elastic <coughs> hem which is a very interesting idea for sure. And then you've got, yeah. So she's right. It doesn't provide a ton of bulk, especially through here where, you know, a lot of those ruffles would cause um, a lot of bulk or a lot of volume added that doesn't belong to your body. So why should it be there? This is more of like a linen-y version. You could crank these out of so many fabrics. Yeah, that one might be like a little bit of a lighter weight one. Yeah, so you can see here how it is sort of a circle skirt combined with an elastic waist, which is just brilliant. I don't know why that's nine and a half euros though. I wish some of these were like in the six euro range. I'd be buying them up like crazy because she does have some really good ideas that obviously are like well thought out for a woman's body. But for me, it's value and there's not a lot of value. I could probably, I honestly, I could probably figure that one out myself. Maybe not everybody could do that, but all right. Jolie Mome. Hmm. This jumpsuit has the fun spirit of its designer. The talented Helene, French blogger of, oh man, Helene Etle Jolie Momet. <laughs> Elasticated at the back to accentuate the feminine curves. It can also be pulled in at the front. Two sets of three pleats demark the top of the trousers and follow down to the start of each extra wide leg. Yeah, okay. The jumpsuit features an invisible zip, can be made with or without sleeves, with short sleeves, or with a flat or gathered sleeve cap. Okay. Whew. Okay. So, anything new and interesting here? No. Okay. So, this is what they mean. Well, we'll get to the line drawings here in a second. Let's go there. Super cute though, right? That's the sleeveless version in some kind of chambray. Okay, so you've got your V-neck, center front seam. This is the kind of, you know, plain sleeve cap, short sleeves. These are the pleats that she's talking about are sewn down. And then the pleat opens up and is carried into what it creates the width of your leg. 
it's a really complicated way to say something that you've probably seen a dozen times. Um, but it does create for a beautiful leg line. So here's your little um, ruffle sleeve, ruffle sleeve with a gather, sleeveless or sleeved. So can you see how these pleats just kind of like fold open and that's what creates the wide leg? It's not like the leg is drafted out like this. These are what creates the volume, which again, you've seen a thousand times. This is actually center front zipper, not just a center front seam. So you zip up through the front, which makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of, which is important because obviously to go to the bathroom, you have to take this off, which some of you have a real problem with. I don't mind it. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't mind it at all. Like even in public, I'm like, what ups? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because like I wear like bralettes. So it just feels like I have like a crop top on. I don't know. But beautiful sleeve. You can see the little baby hem here. You can see the zipper detail here too. Sort of a mid-range shot. Again, I have so many lightweight drapey fabrics. I need to find something to do with them. And I think I've been a little bit hesitant to make dresses lately because I don't know. I'm like feeling like that's not me anymore, but it is or it isn't. I don't know. So this would be a good compromise. It'd be like both. I love a jumpsuit. And from what I've seen, all of her, have we had a back view of this yet? All of her, um, wait, is this the back? That's the front. Um, all of her pants seem to be really well drafted through the bum. Here is a back view. So you can see there's not a lot of extra fabric. You know, it actually looks quite slim because you don't have the pleats in the back. In the back, you only have like a little bit of gathers. Um, so it's actually a slimmer leg in the back than it is in the front, which for those of us that are wider back here, we don't necessarily want all that extra fabric, you know? So cute. I love it with a sneaker. Yeah. Gosh, I, there's already like five that I would literally put in my cart and buy right now. Oh, here's another back view. See how it's just kind of pulled into this drawstring? <clears throat> but that looks great, right? Oh. I want them all, but I don't have the time to make all of these. So <laughs> I really need to like think about it some. So here's all the things that you'll learn. Again, French seams. Create a runner. I don't know what that is. Oh, is that like a tie? <clears throat> All right, no fabric or no garment measurements on this one or body measurements for that matter. Um, but I think it's roomy enough and it's in her regular size range. So I think that I could definitely make this work because it's just so, you know, loose fitting. <clears throat> All right. Now we have this cutie little top. This one feels fun. This one reminds me of, um, oh, Sola. Remember that Sola pattern? Like the one random one that was on her Etsy shop but wasn't on her website? This one reminds me of that. Bohemian blouse with, oh, this is called Vera Volte. Uh, Bohemian blouse with a slight retro twist. It gets its flair from a V-shaped cut in front and back. Choose the blouse or dress version with long sleeves, with a ruffle, short sleeves with or without a hem, with or without a hem, and optional sleeve caps. A perfect choice for a first time sewer and lots of fun. So here you go, first time sewers. One of the few beginner patterns that she actually like claims is beginner. This looks just as easy or complicated as the little tank top with the ruffle and that was intermediate. So I don't know. Um, here are our line drawings. Let's just go straight to this one. So, oh, I see. You can, oh, the girls like the ruffles too. So you've got a little ruffle addition to your sleeve. This is all sewn into a ruffle. Interesting to me that this is beginner because this is kind of challenging to sew it into a little peak like this. I mean, not like, you know, rocket science or anything, but you definitely have to like slow down and take your time, especially if you're brand new to sewing. 
um, or you have this little band ruffle on the hem here and then dress and shirt version. Here's how long it is. You can get an idea of the volume too. It is really cute. It is really cute. Dang it. I just like the shape of it so much. I love an empire waist. Um, you know, I like shirts with lots of volume to wear with tighter pants like this. I love that this goes down like the ruffle. You got to imagine under her arm goes down into a peak and then back up again. Yeah, that's just really cute. There's the sleeve. It does seem a little bit short, right? Here it is with the little ruffle detail, which I know when you were looking at that line drawing, you were thinking it looked a little bit like wings, I guess, but this looks kind of cute. I love it in this like eyelet too. Right? Isn't that just like sweet, casual, cute, fun, basic with a twist? That's me. And then here are dress versions. Oh, goodness. So 16 dress versions and then, oh no, that's eight. Okay, so eight tops and eight dresses. Oh, well, I like this as a dress. <laughs> I would make a gajillion of these too. I might be in trouble, you guys. But if I'm thinking about it, like this is what's going to help me sew my stash. Oh, if each one of them is around $10 and I like like five of them so far, that's only $50 in patterns. That's not that bad. Considering I wouldn't have to pay for fabric, right? And I can make multiple versions. I'm just talking myself into this. I'm doing the sewing math. I'm doing the sewing girl math where you just justify it at all costs. Oh gosh. She just has some really cute designs. What can I say? It's just like, you know, when you find somebody that's like, that gets you, I think, I think she gets me. Oh God, look at, oh, is this the skirt? Okay. I thought it was the jacket and I was about to really, it's just a jean jacket. I don't know. I was, <laughs> I'm just like in the zone. So this is Charmé, Charm, I don't know. This rather short skirt is composed of two layered elements assembled on a wide V-shaped waistband on the back and front. For a minimalist version, you will use the underneath skirt which is flared simple and asymmetrical or I'm sorry simple and symmetrical for a more romantic garment add the top skirt which is gathered and asymmetrical okay the skirt is closed on the left side with an invisible zipper and a fastener so this one sounds interesting it has like she said this layer here flat hem and this one is an asymmetrical hem both of them are sewn into this little v so it's kind of like flat, like a yoke, and then the skirt's sewn in. Yeah, it's kind of like a dropped peplum, which isn't totally my vibe. I think it's cuter in the drapier fabric for sure. And I kind of want to see it in like two different fabrics where the bottom layer is one and the top layer is like sheer or something. I think that could be cute. Um, here's the back. Yeah, lightweight drapey fabrics. I can see it 100%. Here's your zipper, which also opens into a pocket, I think, which is also a nice detail. Not hard to um, execute either, despite what you might think. Let's see, here's the orange lightweight version. Right, just drapier so it fits closer to the body, less like peplumy. But this is also a really good study in fabric drape and how that affects the look of a garment. Because when you look at this one versus this one, you can really see how drape impacts how this looks. Oh look, she put it on with her hoodie. So yeah, she's cute. She's not a must have. She's sweet. I don't know that I'm going to remember her later. French seams, invisible zipper, and making gathers. And then no side charts. Okay. Oh, and then she moved her 
fabrics up here. So maybe the chart's up here somewhere. I'm just missing it. Mm -mm, not seeing it. Yeah, not seeing it. So eh, I wish that we had that finished garment on all of them. Because I guess the further back we get, the less I'm seeing of that. I can't even tell you the last time I saw it. Girl loves a ruffle, and I love a ruffle that we are so simpatico. Like, oh, okay. This is called Passion. Blouse with Victorian style high neck. Two finishing options are possible, either with smocked collar and cuffs or with a collar stand with flounces. Short or long sleeves with the same finish as on the collar. Slightly fitted blouse with no bust starts for a contemporary look. The patch pockets on the chest provide a lovely contrast to that classical style blouse. Okay, let's look at these line drawings. The smocked collar is interesting to me. Oh, I thought it was button front. It's not. Okay, the line drawings make it look a little bit all the focus is on the boobs. Um, so let's look at the made up versions. Yeah, no, mm -mm. not my fave. It's no wonder we're getting a lot of side views, a lot of back views. Here's one on the front. Yeah, no, no to the patch pockets across the boobs, but maybe without those at all, but then it's kind of plain. Okay. Honestly, like I'm glad I'm starting to not like these because I, like I'd mentioned, was not going to have any money left. So, um, so yeah, it's not that the fit is bad. Just like all of the other patterns we've seen before, the fit, fabrication, all of that is really, really good. I just think the design is a little bit, the patch pockets are weird. If I'm looking at this version that doesn't have the patch pockets, it has this little collar here. I guess it's like a little bit unique, but I can't tell if it's like just weird unique or if like it's cool and unique. Not a lot of people like this up high on their neck anyways. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, mm, I'm not sold on it. It's like, I, I can't put my finger on it. It's like not special enough, I guess, but does they don't all have to be special. So then it would just be basic, but then it's also not basic either. So it's like in this weird like gray area of like, I don't know. Okay. So again, that's that. No size chart or anything. Lightweight wovens was the fabric on it. Oh Lord! All right, this is the last page. We've got a lot of a lot of patterns on this one page. So, this is in vol, voluminous feminine blouse, fully lined garment, lit, with flared silhouette at the front and straight back. The sleeves, slightly gathered, are finished with a little cuff. Not really, a little band, more like it. Um, French seam finish. She's calling this one advanced. I'm a little bit, like, befuddled on the fully lined situation here. I don't think you need to fully line a shirt. Um, it's kind of giving me, like, bowler shirt vibes. I don't know. Cute little band. Gathers here. Flat banded neckline. Back yoke with gathers. Um, itch to Stitch has... A pa is it itch to stitch? Somebody has one. I've made it before. Wouldn't fit me now, but um, definitely have seen this before. Let's see if she shows us the inside, because that is odd. Unless she just wanted it to be like super warm. Okay, no, we're getting no pictures of the inside. So you just have a really like thick double layer lined shirt. So this view makes it look less A-line than the line drawing does. Maybe because a lot of that is sitting toward the front and back. The line drawings on this one are really cute, but I think that the execution of it 
I'm not feeling as much. Is this curved? I don't, yeah, it is a little bit. See here? It's a little bit angled. That's a nice detail. I'm trying to think. If I didn't know that this was a fully lined garment, there's no way. That's got to be, that got to be a misprint. This is not fully lined. Semi-lined, maybe this part. I like it a lot in a drapier fabric. <laughs> I think the lighter weight fabric looks better. And then this is, does she have the ruffle on this one? Is there a ruffle on this one? No, but I'm sure you could add it. Yeah, and then the collar with the button. Yeah, it's definitely cute. Um but not something that I haven't seen, right? Like we've got a lot of these lightweight dra drapey blouses in our arsenal of indie patterns. So I, I think maybe all of her patterns are finished with French seams. <laughs> um, button placket, interfacing a collar, assembling a sleeve, cuffed short sleeve, and then lining a yoke. So it's just the yoke, it's not the full thing. I was gonna say that's just kind of blowing my mind. Um, fabric requirements, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. That is in vol. Now we have Stockholm. Timeless blouse or dress with raglan sleeves. Version A is three length sleeves with a basque at their bottom, which I think, oh, I don't know what that means. Uh, version B, long sleeves with a basque at the bottom of the bodice. Let's see if we can discern, determine what a... Oh, like a blouse? Or peplum? Yeah, I don't know. But the line drawing is kind of cute. Let's see what it looks like on her. Oh, I see. Yeah, not great for pairs. Um, it's like a dropped peplum. Which I guess you don't have to sew the peplum on. There's a version without it. Oof, this fabric gave her a time. Um, regular bodice starts, the raglan sleeve. Here's the sleeve. The sleeve has like little pleats in it. That's really cute. Again, not super hard to just kind of add to whatever shirt pattern you've already got even if it was the other pattern of hers that had the raglan sleeve this is concerning this was happening on the yellow one and I was giving it a pass because of the fabric but this is too small through here the first time I've seen any of her tester photos where or her sample photos where something was off in the fit um, does it happen in this white one yeah yeah, something odd is happening underneath the arm with this raglan. <laughs> I do like it in the eyelet, though. That's really cute, too. Also, very, very wide neckline, right? Doesn't that look like it's falling off this shoulder, gaping here? Yeah. First one that I've seen where I'm like, um, especially, too, because look at this neckline. It's nothing like that white neckline. So... Box pleats, bias tape. Yeah, that, um, I imagine what happened is that eyelet, because it is, you know, it's got the holes in it, kind of, it's just stretched out, um, which can happen. Okay, so now we're at Idol, Idel. V-neck long sleeve blouse with pin tucked shoulders, which create a delicately rounded effect that's so chic. Button back, which I think was like, it, it. button backs definitely had their moments in indie pattern design world, and everybody was buying them up. Um, now, I think maybe not so much. <laughs> but here's a little pleated sleeve that is really cute. But other than that, this is just a pretty straightforward bodice. Yeah? Other than the cute sleeve, this is just like any other top you've got in your stash. So, 
slash and spread your sleeves, put some pleats in, and voila, you've got this top. I was looking for, for the armpit situation. This one's not nearly as bad as that raglan was. I'm wondering if the further we get back, I don't know if she like, oh, that's kind of cute with the, with the sheer sleeve. Again, you can do that with any pattern you've got already. You don't need to buy this one to do that. That's a close up of the pleats, which is really nice. I was going to say, I'm wondering if we get further back. Like, I think the way that the, the websites are organized is the newest pattern is first. So maybe these older patterns, she was using like a different drafting situation in the sleeve. Okay. <clears throat> Next, be pretty. Okay. V-neck blouse or dress lined front back yoke in one piece for perfect finish. So again, the burrito method box pleat beneath back yoke, traditional like button down shirt vibe, long sleeve, either plain or with tear resistant slit and button cuff. Flounces can be added beneath front and or back yoke. So yeah, from here up, it's kind of just like a regular button down. You can add a little ruffle there. I don't know what the tear proof slit means. Shouldn't they all be tear proof? <laughs> um, we have kind of a slight French um, dart there. Kind of long in the shoulder. I guess it's a little bit unique that you don't normally see like front yokes on like a, just a V-neck. There's the back. Doesn't really fit through the hip. Here it is in a shirty with that ruffle. So cute. Again, take any button down shirt that you've got in your stash. You can add that ruffle into it. Same thing here. Yeah, they all look a little bit small, just really small and a lot of pulling through here. Um, all these older ones. I didn't notice that in the earlier ones. Yeah, cute little design. Again, I could hack that into just about any pattern that I've already got. Yeah, I think it's just high. I think that the arm size is just high. Oh, she put piping in this one. That's a cute detail too. And then here's the dress version. <clears throat> just extended and then she added her own belt. Okay. Now we've got something called Tokyo. Dress or blouse with round neckline, long and slightly rounded shoulder finished with a yoke and a flared skirt. The model can be lined or not. So an elastic waist dress. Again, we this is nothing new. But I think in her, like about me, she said she started designing in 2015. So, I mean, the drop waist, everything about this is like 10 years old. I get it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, do we have an opinion about designers like retiring certain designs like they do in big four, certain things being out of print because they're just, I mean, I think you'd expect for them to be timeless and, you know, be able to be desirable for years and years, but does it do them a disservice? you know, to have some patterns where like in the beginning, obviously I was like, yes, yes, yes. I like all these. This is so great. Like I'm going to buy them all. And now that we're getting toward the end here, AKA the beginning of her designing career, I'm feeling less and less like excited. Not that I won't go back and get those other ones, but I don't know. It just makes me feel like maybe there is some validity to retiring some patterns that are not representative of who you are as a designer anymore. 
or not representative of what's in style anymore. That said, this is Helios. Helios is a sundress with two length options. The V-neck and cinched waist create a feminine appearance while the pretty butterfly sleeves add a floaty look. On the back, the waist is elasticated and a drawstring selected according to taste runs through to B to the front where it is tied. Two sleeve links and three dress links make it a very versatile item ranging from a little beach dress to an elegant cocktail outfit. Yes, I'm getting beach cover-up vibes. I'm even getting like a little bit of lingerie vibes. Maybe the trim is helping with that. <coughs> this is a maxi version. Does not look like the beach or like lingerie. This is new. We haven't seen an illustration like this in a, at all. Oh, so it's like a, um, um, shoot, what are those called? It is like a beach dress. That's how you sew those. It's a rectangle and then you sew a little seam up here and then it makes sleeves. And then these are your different links. You can just add tiers to the bottom. Again, I think you can even find patterns like this for free uh, or at least like this one and then you just add your tiers to it. So I don't know anybody that's going to be spending a ton of money on this because it kind of already exists for free. Let's see if there's any other versions besides this green dress. Here's the white dress again. That would be really pretty. Um, the white is making me think of bridal. Um, if it were in like a little bit drapier of a fabric, it would be super pretty for like a bridal rehearsal dinner or something. Oh, and this one, yeah, she looks like she's ready to go tour, you know, Versailles or something. So, really cute, can be done without spending nine and a half euros on it. <clears throat> this does say that it has the sizes, but no, like, size chart. I don't think it would be there. Certainly, she has a size chart within the instructions, so she just needs to pull that out and attach it to here or give us a link or something. So here is another button front. I think we've seen this before, right? Front yoke with a collar, back um, yoke with a little bit of gather. Button front, you've got some cuffs. We don't need to look at that, right? Same thing with this. We've seen the little, like, wings. This one, I guess, okay, I will take a look at this simply because the back looks so interesting with this trim detail in the back. But I really only want to look at the pictures. <laughs> Okay, so lots of options here, but that V yoke, V yoke in the back, right. I was going to say, I bet it would be really cool in a sheer, and I'm right. That is really cool. So this feels unique, right? This feels modern. There it is in the front. Yeah, that's really cool. I like this one a lot. Um, I'm, I'm, we're back to liking. Uh, so, or you can use a solid fabric, obviously. I just love that this go, this little ruffle goes up into the shoulder. I think that that is so sweet. <clears throat> right? It just like carries around. Of course, I love gingham. Here, you can see a better picture of it here. How it just scoops around into the back. It's kind of like a country, you know, western shirt but cuter <laughs> but cuter yeah exactly and I don't know could you do this on your own yeah you just like you know cut this apart in a v-shape and you know add your seam allowances and then make a big long ruffle yeah you could probably do it on your own um yeah cute cute idea cute idea and that was Verdige, I think. Verdige. Okay, next we have Claudie, which is a cardigan. Peter Pan collar cardigan. Lines jacket with straight cut and Peter Pan collar. Various finishing options for a different style every time. With or without a collar, zipper, or elastic waistband. From most chic to most hip. 
Okay, I bet that's the chic version. Open front jacket. Oh, yeah, this does kind of have a lot of options. Okay, so we have that gray version. We have this version, which looks just like the gray version. Here's your collar. Yeah, not a fan of Peter Pan. Again, though, 2015, I think Peter Pan was having a moment. I had lots of patterns with Peter Pan collars. She might have put a little piping in here, which is a very interesting detail. That's it. So we don't get one of the elastic um, hem, which is a bummer because I kind of wanted to see that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, simple. Again, I probably have a whole bunch of these in my stash. And if I don't, you know, like for nine euros, you can get these at Simplicity for a dollar. Um, so... Not worth the value, I don't think. <clears throat> All right, now we have this jacket called Merci. Straight cut coat with front button or zip closure with or without a collar. The front cuts include two pockets edged with a ruffle or not. The back of the coat can either be straight and simple or adorned with a fancy back gathered by an elastic for a more comfortable and stylish look. What does all of that mean? Because it sounds cute. So you've got your seam here with a pocket in it and a ruffle, button front, collar. Wow, okay, so it's kind of like an angled sort of princess seam. You put a little pocket in there. You can make a little welt ruffle, collarless, collared, and then you have your two back options. Also zippered or buttoned. Let's see some of these. Here's the plain back, right? It kind of gives a bit of a cocoon shape. Buttoned, okay. Here is the inside where you can see some of the lining details. Here is, oh, it's not, is it zippered and that's like a flap? The collarless is really chic to me. Yeah, you can see the little pocket there. I don't know, is this covered buttons or what? Here's the back which kind of makes it look like a jacket over a skirt. I don't think the elastic is meant to be functional. It obviously sits, you know, at or a little bit below the high hip. I don't know. It's is it it's really cool, but maybe too cool for me. Like people would think that I made a mistake or something. <laughs> I don't know. Let me find out about the zippers. She doesn't say about closures. Let's see down here. Is there closure information? Lining, sleeve, head, interfacing, open in zip. Or six buttons. And then your elastic band. Okay. I mean... I think it probably doesn't help either that I already saw the other kind of like long jacket that I just like more than that one. Artisan, artisan, artisan. Straight blouse with shortened gathered sleeves above a wristband or simple short sleeves. Lined yoke with diagonal cutting at the front. Mean bias on the bias. And nice V low neck at the back with a thin tab above. Again, that's really hard to button by yourself. <laughs> so gathers with little volume below back and front darts. Declinable into a dress, meaning you can lengthen it. Elastic waist or not. French seams and sheath finishes. So there's the back. You have this little yoke band thing with three buttons. The V is really cute and sweet. This is the front, 
front yoke with little gathers, great room for your bust. Oh, we have to see in the garment on this one that shows the yoke lining. Oh, here's the dress. Yeah, that's hard to read with the stripes, but yeah, she's cute. Again, nothing that I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. Like if I saw it in a store, I'd probably keep moving. You know, this is the dress with the elastic in it, in the waist. Oh, let's see up inside. What are we looking at? Just the drawstring? The elastic casing? Okay. It's cute. Thanks for sharing. This one, she got her sister or somebody to help her model it. Oh, this embroidery is really cute. That's a, obviously all yokes are a great place to add any kind of embroidery. You can see it here too. Oh, look. Bye. See ya. It's fun hanging out. <laughs> Oh, goodness. That's what happens in long videos. I start to go a little wacky. But good news whoops, is that we're on our last pattern, Zephyr. And it is a v-neck blouse or dress with delicately full skirt, lined bodice for a perfect finish, long or seven-eighth sleeves finished with a simple hem or a tear-resistant slit. What does that mean? Cuff and flounce. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like a little bit of a baby doll. Okay. Oh, here's a little pink version. So this whole part is lined and this part is not. Oh, is it supposed to be crooked like that? I don't think so. That's a cute view. I just love volume tops. And this one seems a little bit short through here. Maybe it's rolling to the back some. Did she put a ruffle here? Girlfriend likes a ruffle and so do I. Yeah, now this looks a little bit high, you know, like the bottom of her bust is like right here. So this should come down some. Yeah, that looks a lot better already. Even that though, kind of, kind of a little bit high, somewhere in the middle. Cute though, and nice little chambray and little ruffles. So, so sweet. But again, basic, almost too basic, you know. Oh, this is the tear-resistant slit. I don't know why we have to say that it's tear-resistant. Aren't all seams tear-resistant? I guess no. Well, resistant, yes. It's an odd way to say that, you know? Oh, this one, she put a little trim in. You know what? She does have a lot of really, really great ideas for how we can embellish <laughs> the patterns we already have. I know that that's terrible, but... Um, yeah, it does look, well, maybe it could be a little bit more forward. I'm looking at the shoulder seam here. Because you can see how this comes up in the middle. And it just needs to be straight across. Because the, the um, line drawings show it being straight across. See? Well, I mean, maybe there's a little curve there. But not, not as dramatic as it's seeming. Now that I'm looking at this, this also seems high. I don't know. I think that I'm probably overthinking this little basic blouse. Okay, so that is it. That is Atelier Scummit. What do we think? Obviously, I'm a fan. Um, I thought, let's. I'm just going to kind of peruse all this while I give my final thoughts. Um, she had some really, really cute ideas, really cute designs, especially like her more recent stuff. You can really tell that she's kind of like evolving as, as a designer. And I just love that so much. Um, look, you can get little girl versions of the adult versions. So sweet. Um, I definitely will be grabbing one or two <laughs> maybe of these patterns. Look, there's a little purse pattern that's free. Um, 
there were a lot of them that I really liked that felt unique and different, yet also still very much my style. But I want to know what you guys think of these patterns. Um, are they something you would be investing in? Do they feel like special enough, unique enough, something that you can't get anywhere else? Do they feel like your style? Um, any of those things, let me know in the comments section below. If you do end up buying them, let me know. If you are someone who has bought these before, you own Atelier Scummit patterns and you've made them, um, please, please, please leave a comment because that helps the rest of us kind of know what to expect whenever we get into the instructions and the drafting and all of that kind of stuff. So that is going to do it for me today. I have linked here at the end slate the last first impression Friday I did, which was for the Vogue spring patterns. So check that out if you are inclined. Otherwise, I will see you all very soon. Bye.